And I really just want, oh God, oh God, oh cut. Cut, Vin. What happened, Brad? Oh. Tragedy over here. Is this your first time making kombucha, Brad? It sure looks like it. So here we got a good close-up of, of, of a scoby or the mother. And this is the, the life. This is the, um, the force behind making kombucha. We're going to feed the scobies some for the make the kombucha. So what we feed it with is sugar and tea. And the ratio that was handed down to me, the master formula, is for one quart of water, you add 70 grams of sugar and seven grams of tea. So we're doing a times 10 batch. So 700 grams of sugar, 70 grams of tea. So we'll start with the sugar. It's a lot of sugar. I mean, we're not gonna lie here. But again, the end product is actually rather dry because the SCOBY, it, it, it eats the sugar. I'm gonna do a nice, like a gunpowder, gunpowder green tea. And for 70 grams, I'll use 60 of green and 10 grams of black. We'll pinch for good luck. And then from there, that's it. So this is for a times 10 recipe. Water already brought to a boil. I turn it off. We pour this in, stir it around, let the sugar dissolve. You don't want to, oh, you're just steeping it. It's like making, you're pretty much making sweet tea. So while that's steeping, we'll take a peek at the girls here. Um, I have four different vessels, okay? This is the scoby. It's layered almost like, if you can zoom in and look at it, it's, it's almost layered like a, like a laminated biscuit. You could peel back the layers, where I can start peeling layers and I can, you can give them to a friend and they can make it at home. All right, Vin, quit horsing around. Back to business here. So I got some cheesecloth, okay? Wonderful product. Line that in the, in the uh, fine mesh chinois, and then we'll strain that into another vessel couple more minutes now and then we'll refrigerate it what I do is I use a little less water and then I'll add some ice cubes so it'll help chill it and it'll also uh, speed up the chilling process all right we'll put this in the sink okay this goes in here like so okay tell me the walk-in to find that what cost a lot of that I ordered last week guys that was mine no you didn't order it I don't think you ordered it. Please get this. Ah! Vinny, Vinny's my witness. Cameraman doesn't miss anything. Classic, I ordered it, where is it? But he never ordered it. Today's crazy. Today's whoa, whoa, PG-13, right? It's a family uh, show. Since today's been so busy, I haven't even gotten to unpack the fresh truck. It shouldn't look so messy in here. Usually this will be all unpacked, but uh, me and old Vinny, but Benny over here, we didn't get to do that yet. So that might even have to wait till tomorrow because we got booch to make, come on. We got a good steep going. Right behind the Claire. So again, chinois, fine mesh strainer, and some cheesecloth. All right, that's scoby food, man. We're gonna have a couple happy girls over there. So from here, remember I was saying that I, uh, I cheated the water a little? Say I needed 10 quarts, I only put eight in. So we can put some ice cubes in to help chill it so we can do this a little quicker. Science, man, science. Yeah. We'll put this right in the wall. Never ends, then. Here we go. Coming in hot, sharp, dangerous. Chris Morocco, he's on fire. So we'll wait till that gets to about 72 degrees and then we'll, uh, we'll do the old siphon into the, into the scobes. You don't need to roll on this, man. We're cheating. I had to keep it in the walk-in, and uh, now we're just bringing it up to the temperature. And then once that's, you know, we just don't want to shock it. If it's too cold, it can shock it. If it's too hot, it can kill it. So we'll get it to right around where it's at, right, and that's quite all right. And um, and then we'll feed them. So stand with me, folks. That's it. I'm sure there's far more sophisticated ways to do this. I don't, I don't have those. Uh, we'll just use the old gravity to do this for us. I get that little siphon siphon hose that I got. You want to get, you sure you want in on Brad's world? Yeah. All right, good. Look, hold this. Oh, there's no free rides, no free lunch on the, in Brad's world. You see that little hole there? Try to sneak that down there. Oh wait, I lied to you, don't do that yet. Oh my God. Boom, right there. We don't need you anymore, Andy. I'm out, I'm out. So good, we'll fill this up all the way to the top. Then we'll do this to to all of them, 
and then it sits, and then it's a tasting game until it, until it gets to the sweet, the, the perfect spot, the balance of tart, sour, and sweet. And then from here, it's just every day you, you test it. So I keep a straw, I slip it right down here. Come in here, get this, Vinny. I slip it right down on the side, just a little pinch pull. Because it was so sour here, just because it's been hanging out in there, we haven't had time to feed them. This will probably happen really quick. I'll let this go for probably, what's today, Wednesday? Friday, I'll probably bottle. All right, so this next step, very sophisticated tool. Best scopes in the biz, bud. You don't want to touch that with your hands either. The bacteria in your hands is very bad. Whammo bammo, right in there. Now, you want to make sure that your tea is still a little sweet, not completely sour. Very important for the second fermentation. You see, I only filled it a little bit, but I have several vessels, and I like to do, I like to make a blend of them all because one could be a little more sour than the other. And I really just want, oh God, oh God, oh cut. Like I said, you always want to leave a little bit in for mom because uh, she needs it. So yeah, you want to use a bottle that you can seal real nice. I like using, the square ones are not so good. Some of them, you got to be careful. You have to get ones that are fit for, for food grade and for fermentation because what we're doing next is putting this tea in these bottles with a little bit of juice, the fruit juice, and it's gonna, it's gonna have a secondary fermentation and it's gonna start to carbonate and it's gonna build up pressure. So if you have a really cheap or bad, poor glass bottle, it can explode and, uh, and it has. And this is important, you wanna label them. Make sure you put, you know, so you remember which flavor you go and you can, uh, you gotta put the date on it so you can keep track of how long it takes to, to do the double fermentation. I uh, got some really nice Moscata grapes, fresh and I juiced them and we're gonna, we're gonna try making a kombucha with that. Now, I like, so I use a lot of like uh, already packaged bottle juices. They're pasteurized, so they're, they're dead, but they add a good flavor and they have the sugar, which is the most important. When you make your own, it'll, it carbonates a lot faster because it's just uh, eager to live, man. So yeah, like I said, you know, this ain't rocket surgery, so I don't really, uh, I eyeball everything, you know? I'm not a really big measure. So that's how much we do. We'll call it must. Oh, I like that. I like to come up with little names for them, you know, I'm really creative. So this is apricot. I just write apricot. And then you can mix them too. You can really put anything in it. I mean, We've done uh, like fresh berries, uh, juice them, and they come out fantastic. All right, so let's bottle a few real quick, see where we're at. So then, yeah, I got this big old my bottle and jug. And then uh, you just fill them up. You want to leave, well, you have to leave. You got to leave a little bit of air on there too. Now I let those little bubbles settle and then I'll come back and top it off. But you want to fill it to about right here. And then that's it. You seal it up. You want to get it as tight, real tight though. It's got to be airtight. Like a frog's ass, watertight. You can use just regular wine corks, but these seem to work really well. You can just keep reusing them. But you got to push them in pretty, pretty good. As far as they'll go. Oi, that's that. Wait about, I always you know, put a date on it, I wait about four days, and then uh, don't open it, you know, just let it go. A little patience, you start fooling it. Booch doesn't like to be messed with, you just gotta let it do its thing. So yeah, you add all that juice, but when, it, when it's done, it's not real sweet because the living organisms, microorganisms inside here, eat the sugar and produce the carbon dioxide. Science. So that's it, Brad's bitch and Booch. Oh God, <laughs> this is gonna get me fired. <laughs> we have successful carbonation. Look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful thing.